Apart from one guy pulling a horse box who shouted hairdresser at me in this, who clearly is a small penis, everyone else has really, really taken to this car this week. I've had looks from people, comments from people, people pointing in traffic. It's the Suzuki Jimny and it rides again as a commercial. And because it's commercial, it means this car is brand new in Ireland at 21,000 euro, which is pretty good. So let's check it out. Retro front lights, like the original model, same with the grille, there's little nods there. All this plastic can't be color coded, I'm afraid. Uh, around this side, just and, and on the driver's side as well, there's two little grooves in the paint, again, on the original car. Retro steel wheels, but there's a lovely gray color to them. Black mirrors. Um, there's loads of flaws in this car, like the elbow room inside is really, really tight. <laughs> and you'll want to really know your passenger very, very well because you're sitting very close together. Not quite two meters tall, I'm about five foot 10. It's 1.6 meters wide, so it is snug, but it literally is like a baby G-Wagon, so much cheaper. And there's bits of Jurassic Park if you're a fan of the movies. It feels like one of the Jurassic Park vehicles that drive around Jurassic Land. Brake lights are down here and up here. There is, of course, a spare wheel on the back, like the original Jimny. Uh, the door opens this way for predominantly UK markets and right-hand drive markets for footpaths and stuff like that. And it's actually quite long. When you open this out, you need a bit of space if you're in a parking space where there's cars behind you and stuff like that. It's all carpeted. A little bit of a, a tool kit and a jack down here. There is actually a 12 volt in the boot which is actually more than I expected. You do have to duck down to get into it. Then you have a cage back here to prevent any messing because it's a commercial vehicle. There's nothing to tie anything down to, but it is almost 900 liters. Now, obviously you're including floor to seating in that, uh, in this space. And when you had passenger chimneys, there was very little. It was like 80 liter boot or something. So look, if you know what you're getting into, a rough and ready cargo space, you're gonna, you're gonna be happy enough with it. It's just where you need to park it. You have to constantly think about things because of how wide that opens. Again, main theme for this car is don't have huge expectations and you really will grow to love it. So it's plasticky. The screen isn't even the one that you get in something like the Swift or the Vitara. It's like it has Bluetooth, but you're probably better off just using your cable to plug in down here, of which there's one USB charger, manual aircon. It's all hard and rough and ready, but very wipeable. Two analog dials that go up to 180 kilometers. You're not gonna see that. Uh, the seats, they will adjust this way, but that's as far as they're going because of that cage. And it means, well, maybe six foot people will be able to manage, but I don't know. And same with the steering wheel, it goes up and down, but there's no point of it coming this way because it would actually be dangerous. There's a few shortcut buttons on the things here. A five-speed manual gearbox, more of that in the drive, uh, a physical handbrake, couple of spaces for cup holders back here, low gear and high in four-wheel drive that you can adjust, and then in two-wheel drive mode, it's rear-wheel drive. So there's, there's a bit of a kick there as well. However, a bit of a kick, terms and conditions. Uh, for context, it's just over 100 brake horsepower out of a 1.5 petrol engine. There's no diesel. And Suzuki, please make an electric one of these because it will ensure the Jimny lives on, but also it will be really, really nippy. Traction control is down here, one button, flips it off, and then you've got hill descent, which will just break the car for you if you're going down uh, slopes and hills, because this thing will actually comfortably go off-road. The Jimny still comes with the body on ladder frame, coils on either corner. And it means when you're driving on road, it can be a little bit floaty, a little bit, which way are we going? The tires are so thin on it, but it all lends itself to a very clever four wheel drive setup, which can put power and cut power to whichever wheel has no traction and which wheel can actually get you out of a whole load of mud. And a lot of fancier SUVs, which this isn't, just wouldn't be able to cope with it, but for its small stature and very, very reasonable price tag, this can do an awful lot of things that would put more expensive Jeeps 
to terrible shame. Straight away, as soon as you hit something like a motorway, you're going to realise that this thing wobbles around a bit. Although it's got nice visibility over hedges and stuff if you are driving it around the countryside like we are today. Uh, the tyres are thin, with, there's actually good grip on it, but you're going to get a lot of tyre squeal if you do push on. I think to 60 or 100 kilometres an hour, you might be talking 10, 11 seconds. It's, it's not going to be brisk. It's doing late seven litres per 100 kilometres, which for something that barely weighs a ton, you might expect it to do better. And that obviously isn't with four wheel drive engaged for any big length of time. And it's a noisy cabin. There's times where you'll find yourself checking if I left one of the windows just slightly ajar because <laughs> this noise from the outside world creeping into the cabin. But for all those things, you'll just forgive it because it's kind of raw. It kind of reminds you of what driving used to be without driving aids. And I'm not saying I like the fact that it hasn't got a rear view camera, for example, when you're trying to park it, uh, but you kind of feel like the boots over your shoulder as soon as you're looking out. So you, you do have a sense of uh, spatial awareness, but you know, there are a few driver aids that you would like. Now it does have lane departure, although it doesn't seem to come on very often. And uh, there's a bit of noise from the mirrors on the side, although there is a slight curved windscreen that apparently is designed just to help reduce some wind noise off the roads. Also in this commercial edition, you can't get things like LED lights in the front that really do, I suppose, juxtapose the retroness of the car with technology that makes it look very modern so those yellow halogen bulbs on the front do i suppose fit in with the retro vibe of it i know in today's lighting quality you might want a bit more light out of them over smooth normal road surfaces is fine when it's a bit bumpy it's it's a bit jittery and wobbly and it's times like that that reminds you that this thing for its size would actually prefer to be on a bit of a muddy dirt track. And once you don't want to go particularly fast, you'll be okay. I think some people have managed to get this up to 160 kilometers an hour on an autobahn. I'm not sure you'd actually want to do that though. It is also crying out for a sixth gear that would just make it a little bit quieter when you are screaming along a motorway at whatever, 100 kilometers an hour. As you turn the steering wheel, your brain knows you're turning it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that there's any sort of feedback. It's, it feels like you're turning it, but nothing's actually happening. As I come up to a roundabout here now, let's just throw it in a bit, see what happens. Whoa. Yeah, it's a, it does go a bit wide. And then when you floor it, it's noisy, very, very noisy. <laughs> and that's fourth gear. And then we go for fifth. And it does start to sound a little bit like a hairdryer. And it gets bumpy. And these are smooth roads, <laughs> roads here that I'm on. But again, it's just, it's for fun. And for 21,000 euro, you could waste money on lots of other cars that wouldn't give you this fun factor most days that you're going to drive it. I guess if you had the luxury of being able to tuck one of these away in a garage and drive it for fun factor rather than an everyday car, I mean, if you open the window, you get more elbow room. Uh, you get idiots like the woman behind me, I'm not sure if you can actually see her in the shot, who's literally sitting on the back of this car for some reason. It, it kind of... I don't know, it's because of its size, maybe people feel they want to push it along in traffic or something. It's the odd time. And she's in a Volvo, and they're meant to be safe drivers. If you're happy enough though to just cruise around, maybe this would be a vehicle on a farm that you just know will last a long time. But equally, if you're a city slicker, I, like, I, I still think there's a lot to be said for having something like this that's a little bit quirky, uh, especially if you don't have the need for back seats or 
you know, total refinement from a car. I think by today's standards, any vehicle that has a bit of a retro vibe about it, there's, there's instant interest in it. Look at the Honda E or the Ionic 5, the retro 80s look of it. Uh, look at what Opel are doing with the Manta, which hopefully does see the light of day. There's definitely a demand there. I'd, I'd nearly think you could bring back a boxy Starlet and some people would actually buy it. And uh, I think this kind of fits into that sort of category as well. Just don't expect a huge amount from this car and I think you'll get on with it very, very well. In fact, you'll probably grow to love it. I've really enjoyed my time with this. It is kind of impractical, but then you think it's only 21,000 euro. The emissions on it, which they've just managed to sneak through by making a commercial means, it survives. There's a little thing that says way of life there. And you know what? It's just a quirky way of life. If you get it in that bright green or maybe black, it really does look like a baby G-Wagon. And I, it's just, it's not gonna be for everyone's use, just because the limitations of the seats and everything. But if there's only two of you in the house and you've got a dog maybe, or you're single and you never want kids, Get something a bit different. It's 21 grand. There's a good chance it might actually go up in value after you've bought it. And at least it's not another boring crossover SUV that's trying to be something else. This is just, hey, I can go off road if you want me to. I can cope in city environments, but I'm actually a bit of fun to look at. And it'll make people smile. And so many cars today don't. And for 21 grand, I can't argue with it. Thank you very much for watching.